All right, class. Uh, last time we talked about the Reformation. We talked about Luther, Calvinism. Uh, today, Reformation is still our topic. Central question, how did the Reformation divide Europe politically? Uh, in particular, the English Reformation. King Henry VIII uh, wanted an, uh, uh, an annulment from his wife, Catherine of Aragon, because she could not have a son. So a lot of us have heard of King Henry VIII. He had six wives, so on and so forth. Um, but the, the big thing that came out of King Henry VIII is, is that, you know, at the beginning, he did not support Luther. He continued to support the church. But when it came time uh, to, you know, look down into the future, he could not have a son with his wife, Catherine of Aragon. Um, and so he decided to uh, try to get a divorce from her so he could find someone that could bear him a son. Now, Catherine um, was the daughter of the King of Spain and distant cousin of the Pope. So Pope Clement VII says, no, I'm not going to grant you an omen. You need to continue to be uh, married to uh, Catherine of Aragon and, and case settled. Um, King Henry VIII um, did not like that answer. Uh, and so he started to undertake some of the Protestant views, and he decided to split from the Catholic Church. King Henry VIII breaks from the Catholics to form the Church of England. Uh, the Church of England still believed in many of the tenements of the Catholic Church, but uh, the big difference, of course, is, is that the King of England is now in charge of the Church. Uh, Act of Supremacy in 4 1534 made the King the head of the Church. Monasteries were shut down, and all of the Catholic Church lands taken by the King, which is 25% of the lands in uh, present-day England. Uh, so that was a lot of land, and thus a lot of money. Uh, Thomas More, who uh, wrote Utopia, a, a very uh, influential person in England at this time. He was actually uh, on the court of King Henry VIII, one of his advisors. But he refuses to take an oath to the king, so he is executed. King Henry VIII has a total of six wives, uh, dies in 1547. Um, by one of his wives, he had a son, Edward VII. Edward was the third child of King Henry VIII, uh, but he was um, nevertheless a boy and uh, undertook the throne after he died. King at age 10, but dies shortly after. During his short reign, Protestantism expands in England, in particular Calvinism. Uh, you know, he's a young leader, so he didn't have much say. Oftentimes, listen to his advisors or, or people of the court. Uh, next to take over was Mary Tudor. Um, she was the firstborn of uh, King Henry VIII's um, children, actually daughter of first wife, King Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. She kept close ties to her relatives in Spain. Um, so remember, this was a time in which people uh, oftentimes married uh, you know, their daughters, sons or daughters off to form political ties. Um, uh, and that is the case uh, in Spain. Um, and so many people in Spain felt that they had a right to the throne in England. Once in power after Edward the uh, Sixth um, death, she rescinded many Protestant reforms. Those who did not obey, many were killed, uh, and her nickname was Bloody Mary. So she was a staunch Catholic like her mother from Spain, and <clears throat> Protestantism in England uh, she saw as like an abomination, and she wanted to wipe it clean. So anyone that was practicing in the Church of England, uh, any of the people that had transformed their lives from King Henry VIII and his uh, sons, uh, years in office, uh, now were persecuted, and they were persecuted quite heavily. Uh, and that is where we get the name Bloody Mary. She did not last long in office because of so uh, topsy-turvy, um, and then Elizabeth I came to power. She was the daughter of Henry and Anne Boleyn, took over after Mary was taken out of office. Uh, she helped in the development of Protestantism in England. Um, she allowed people to worship both Catholic and Protestant church. She was more of a moderate. Um, so she was Protestant, but uh, she didn't persecute the Catholics. So she allowed, uh, you know, a mixed religion throughout the country. She successfully turned the Spanish Armada back, which enabled England to begin to dominate the imperialistic world to come. So she was one of the greatest uh, monarchs of all time in England and uh, for that matter of the world. 
Uh, she turned England around. It became a huge global power uh, under the hands of Elizabeth I. All right, remember, history's no mystery. Take the notes.